Good morning, and thank you for joining this presentation of the Peach Educational Session as part of a 2021 virtual Southeast Regional Fruit and Vegetable Conference. My name is Juan Carlos Melgar. I'm an associate professor with Clemson University, and I will be the moderator for this presentation. Before starting, I would like to remind you that pesticide CEU and CCA credits are available for most presentations offered during the live conference. Check the pesticide CEU guide for a list of approved presentations and participating states. The pesticide CEU guide is located in the event resources tab under the media player. It is also available at the resources center located on the main menu of the conference platform. Please note pesticide credits will only be available for registered attendees and only during the live conference. Credits, credits will not be available for on-demand viewing. There is a simple three-step process to, rece to receive pesticide credits. First, go to the audience chat box. It is located on the left side of your screen, audience chat box, and type your first name, last name, and the state for which you are requesting credits. Again, go to the audience chat box on the left side of your screen and type your first name, last name, and the state for which you are requesting credits. You will need to do this for every presentation to, me, to request CEU credits. The second step is to sign out at the end of every presentation. To sign out, go to the audience chat box and type your first name, last name, and the states for which you are requesting credits. You will be reminded to sign out uh, at the end of every presentation. The third step is to complete pesticide uh, CEU registration. You only have to do this one time during the conference. This is not required with every presentation. And to access the pesticide CEU registration web link, open the pesticide CEU guide on the event resources tab located under the media play. The pesticide CEU registration web link is located on the front cover of the guide. This presentation is pre-recorded to reduce technical difficulties. We will be answering your questions live at the end of the presentation, and you can submit a question at any point during the presentation by typing your question in the questions box and pressing send. Don't forget to thank our 2021 sponsors and exhibitors by visiting virtual trade show and uh, featured products pavilion. And lastly, don't forget, don't forget to join us each morning for coffee chats and each evening for networking. Check the conference agenda for details. And now it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Mr. John Mark Lotton. He is a graduate student at the Plant and Environmental Sciences program at Clemson University. And he's working with, uh, under the supervision of uh, Dr. Guido Schnabel and myself. John Mark has been working on peach skin bronzing for the last two years. And this is a very puzzling issue that has been causing big economic losses to some of our growers. But with John Mark's work, uh, it seems that we're finally starting starting to understand some of the factors inducing bronzing. So John Mark, welcome, and we are all ears. Thanks for that introduction. As Dr. Milgar mentioned, my name is John Mark Lawton. I'm a master's student at Clemson University, and today I'll be uh, presenting on my research, give a little bit of information on the new insights about peach bronzing. The presentation today will be consisting of an overview of what bronzing is, what we know to this point. Then we'll dive into the hypothesis that uh, paved way to our experiments, our experimental design. I'll follow up with some results from over the last two years, wrap it up with a good discussion, and then briefly talk about going forward and the future studies of this story. <clears throat> so overview, what is bronzing? Well, bronzing is the discoloration of the skin of peach, uh, which results in loss of marketability. And this is uh, caused by physical, chemical, and physiological factors. So no pathogens have been isolated from effective fruit, meaning it's not uh, caused by fungus, bacteria, viruses, or viroids. When less severe, the symptoms typically appear around the circumference or equator of the peach, as well as the stem and tip sides. But when it's more severe, you can see uh, the discoloration across the entire surface area of the peach. 
to date, there's been limited published studies on the causes of bronzings. Suspects have uh, been um, early season thrip damage, fungicides applied close to harvest, abrasion and rough handling during harvest and post-harvest procedures, and chemical reaction in hydrocooling water. Just want to throw this out there for a little clarification. There's been some publications describing very similar symptoms um, to bronzing, and they refer to it as inking. Uh, we believe that bronzing and inking are indeed the same disorder. You just see here on a high blush side of a peach, you get more of the black, dark brown discoloration, what they call inking, where on the light side of the peach, more background color, less blush, you see the browner, bronzed appearance. Um, so going forward for this uh, rest of the presentation, we uh, will be referring to it as bronzing, uh, and we counted both the black and the brown discoloration uh, as this disorder as we were calculating our results. For the hypothesis, um, we were just uh, really just trying to induce bronzing since it hasn't been studied very heavily in the past, so we kind of took a shotgun approach where we checked out a lot of different avenues um, to see what, what can cause and induce bronzing. Um, our, our major hypothesis is that pre-harvest heavy metal fungicides along with post-harvest treatment of fruit and chilled chlorine dioxide bath increases the incidence of bronzing. And our second one is that excessive water from irrigation along with nutritional imbalances before harvest increases bronzing incidence. So I'll go first start with this first hypothesis that pre-harvest heavy metal fungicides along with post-harvest treatment of fruit and chilled chlorine dioxide and bath increases bronzing incidence. All right, so for the pre-harvest side of this experiment, uh, we were looking at five different pre-harvest spray treatments on a cultivar Scarlet Prince, which is a mid-season uh, heavy blush variety. Our pre-harvest sprays were applied 10 days and one day prior harvest, uh, and they were applied with a pressurized handgun from a six pot plot sprayer until runoff. We had an untreated control, a captain at the labeled rate of four pounds per 100 gallons, Captain at three times the labeled rate, 12 pounds per 100 gallons, and then Captain with the adjuvant AG09075, also known as Transfix, at six fluid ounces, 100 gallons, and then Captain three times the load rate with that same adjuvant. So this block um, is a perpendicular V block, and each treatment had two perpendicular V trees. Each treatment had three replications. It was a completely randomized design and a five by two by two factorial arrangement. Uh, trees were grown and managed as directed in the 2019 Southeastern Peach, Nectarine, and Plum Pest Management and Culture Guide. Uh, after fruit was mature and harvested, 100 fruit from each uh, treatment was taken to the back room at the Musser Fruit Research Center and subjected to a makeshift packing house of sorts, or hydrocooling line of sorts. Uh, we had four different post-harvest treatments, an ice bath, uh, an ice bath with chlorine dioxide, warm bath, and a warm bath with chlorine dioxide. So we took each of the pre-harvest spray treatments, split them into four different post-harvest treatments, and put them into these bath waters for 45 minutes, stirring them frequently before we moved them to cold storage, where they sat for seven days, and then we moved them to room temperature, where they sat for two more days, before we evaluated for bronzing incidence and severity. So this is a scale we use to uh, determine incidence and severity of bronzing. We have zero being no bronzing, perfectly healthy looking peach, one being just less than five percent of the surface area bronzed, as you can see here uh, just maybe one or two small spots, probably still marketable at least for most consumers. On uh, a scale of two, we're between five and 25 percent of the surface area bronzed, and that's where we really start seeing the loss of marketability. Um, three is between 25 and 50 percent of the surface area bronzed, getting really ugly, and then four are just horrendous looking peaches, greater than 50 percent of the surface area bronzed. We'll dive into the results now of this first experiment. Um, looking just at the post-harvest baths treatments, I just wanted to point out that in 2019, the ice water had significantly less bronzing incidence and severity than the warm water baths. Um, we didn't see any differences between 
uh, warm or cold water baths with or without chlorine dioxide for either incidence or severity. And then 2020, um, we didn't see actually any significant differences between any of the um, post-harvest bath factors, whether it was temperature or chlorine dioxide for either incidence or severity. And I'll touch on that a little bit more when we go into looking at the differences between the two years and why that, why we might have saw a difference in the um, significance levels. But going to the meat of it, the good stuff, looking at the uh, pre-harvest sprays for 2019, I'll just quickly describe this graph for everyone. On the left y-axis, we have mean incidence uh, percent from 0 to 100 percent, and then we have mean severity on the right uh, y-axis um, from 0 to 4 as shown from that 0 to 4 ranking scale a few slides ago. And then our treatment sprays are down at the bottom starting from left to right untreated control and we have captain, captain with the adjuvant, captain three times and then captain three times with the adjuvant. And so just looking across the graph um, even from a distance you kind of can see the trend as you increase captain uh, your bronzeance increases as well. And looking at statistical significance we see that captain with this adjuvant is actually significantly less incidence of bronzing than captain alone and as you look at the severity of these treatments you see that the captain plus the adjuvant is not significantly different um, from the untreated control now in 2020 we see similar trends but new year new problems we see a lot higher rate of bronzing all across the board. Um, 2020 wasn't a good year for um, bronzing, or I guess for us it was a great year. We, we got to see a lot of it. Um, but we had, even in the untreated control, over 60% of the peaches had bronzing. Um, so still the trends held up, as you see, as you increase captain, um, you see increased bronzing incidence as well. And Captain Plus, the adjuvant, is significantly less bronzing than Captain alone. Now looking at severity, we see that um, the Captain Plus, the adjuvant, um, is not significantly less than Captain alone in the 2020 season, although it is it has less severity. Alright, moving on quickly but surely to our second hypothesis, which was the excessive water from irrigation and nutritional imbalance before harvest increases bronzing incidence. So for this experiment, we worked with a cultivar, cultivar called PF23, um, and we kind of broke it down to two different, um, two different factors. We had our irrigation, uh, which was put out by two stake misters per tree. We ran those misters for the, uh, the final two and a half, near three weeks before harvest, for six to eight hours a day, five days a week. And there was runoff of water coming from the field, very saturated soils. Um, and then we had uh, potassium as our second uh, factor. And we had either standard rate of potassium or five times the rate of potassium. So our four treatments ended up being we had soil saturated with standard potassium, soil saturated with five times potassium, no irrigation with standard potassium, and no irrigation with five times potassium. Uh, potassium was put out three times each year uh, and applied with one and a half pounds of 0050 sulfate of potash, K2O. That was spread evenly around the trunks of the trees uh, receiving the five times standard rate of potassium. And this was in a completely randomized design and a two by two factorial arrangement. Each treatment had six replications and each replication was just one open center tree. These were also grown with the standard pre-harvest spray applications. Uh, and once these fruit was harvested, they were moved to a fruit cooler um, for seven days at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and then moved to room temperature for two days at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And then evaluated for incidence and severity. Looking at the graphs for this data, we see that in 2019, the big takeaways are looking at the standard rate of K you go from non-irrigated to irrigated, does not change um, bronzing incidence. And again, if you just look at the standard rate K versus the non-irrigated five times rate of potassium, you just add excess potassium, but uh, you don't increase transpiration, no differences either. But when you um, have excessive potassium at five times the rate plus heavily irrigated high transpiration events, you see this increase in bronzing incidence. 
um, and it significantly had higher bronzing severity than any other treatment. Um, in 2020, we saw a similar thing as we saw in Scarlet Prince in 2020. Across the board, we had a lot higher rates of bronzing um, in every treatment. But significantly speaking, we see that the non-irrigated standard rate of K had the lowest severity, um, and then all the treatments combined. So, looking at some explanations of why we saw such vast differences of uh, the increase of bronzing in 2020 season, um, how, how can we explain this? Well, I just graphed the uh, rainfall at the farm. Uh, last three weeks leading up to uh, harvest and in 2019 the last three weeks combined we had about an inch of rain where in 2020 we had really close to three inches of rain so empirical evidence has shown us that in the past bronzing is highly related to rainfall right before harvest um, and so maybe the, the environmental differences um, from just the amount of rain we had might have played a role Moving on, um, how does this all all connect? How does transpiration, potassium, um, irrigation, how does this all relate to bronzing? Well, as you know, transpiration moves water and mobile nutrients like potassium up through the, the roots to the plants, to the, to the leaves and shoots and, and fruit. Um, potassium being a single charged ion um, may compete with double charged ions like calcium, magnesium, um, and it's been shown in other crops to have a kind of antagonistic effect where an uh, increase in potassium leads to a decrease in uptake of other um, positively charged ions. And so this may interfere with the cell wall stability and just kind of predispose the fruit uh, to, um, to bronzing. And then you bring in these other factors like heavy metals and post-harvest handling, which can bring this additional strain to the already weakened cell walls and further increase bronzing. So to summarize and wrap it all up, um, bronzing is a physiological disorder, and we broke it down into two categories. We have category of inducers, what makes bronzing worse. We see that nutritional imbalance in soil can play a role in, in, in inducing bronzing. Heavy metal pre-harvest um, fungicides like Captain has been shown to prove um, increased bronzing. Pre-harvest rainfall, high temperatures, ripening season plays a role, um, post-harvest handling as well. And then what, what alleviates bronzing? We see on the alleviator side we have um, well-buffered and nutrient-bounced soil possibly um, coming into play. Definitely the post-harvest hydrocooling uh, had an effect at least on the years of low to medium uh, currents. And then reduced transpiration, um, the AG09075 or transfix is uh, released as a transpiration inhibitor. And so this reduced transpiration maybe can slow down uh, the movement of the, the, these um, potassium ions or have a role in playing with the bronzing. So going forward, uh, some skin samples have been collected from peaches that have bronzing, from areas of the fruit that are bronzed, and from areas that are not bronzed. And that nutrient analysis is being, um, being calculated to see if there's any differences also, a spray trial with this transfect on other cultivars to see uh, how helpful it can be in reducing bronzing. And this kind of all brings us to our new hypothesis that, um, that an imbalance in soil nutrient content may predispose the fruit to increase susceptibility, and then high fruit transpiration rates during harvest can trigger the symptom expression, symptom expression and then other stress factors can increase its incidence and severity. So with this, I would just like to uh, shout out to all the men and women who made this possible. Huge help from the Mustard Farm staff at Clemson University. Just great people. Couldn't have done it without them. And then, of course, a big shout out to Clemson's Peach team, especially to Dr. Melgar and Dr. Schomble, who are my advisors on this project and helped me immensely along the way. And with that, I'll open up the floor to questions.